Welcome to another episode on Slip and Falls. In this episode, we're going to be talking about nine common injuries from falling downstairs. Let's get right into it. So first, let's talk about broken bones. As you might suspect, one of the most common injuries a person can suffer from falling down the stairs is broken bones. Bones typically break when they sustain more pressure than the bone can withstand. During a fall, your body weight can create a stressful force on your bones. In accidents involving falls down a set of stairs, ankle, hip, and wrist fractures are some of the most common types of broken bone or bone injuries. As you age, typically your bones can lose density. The older you get, the more likely a broken bone can occur as a result of a fall. Legally, however, your age and health should not impact your ability to financially recover from a fall down negligently maintained stairs. Second, let's talk about sprains. Often during a fall, your instinct may be to place your arms in front of you to try and break the fall. If ligaments tear during a fall, you may sustain a sprain or strain. Because ligaments do not receive a lot of blood flow, sprains and strains can take quite some time to heal. Defense counsel may try to downplay your sprain or strain. However, sprains and strains can interfere with your ability to live a normal life. Sometimes a sprain or strain can seriously impact your ability to walk. Other times, sprains and strains can negatively impact your ability to cook, clean, do yard work, or even just brush your teeth. Third, knee damage. It's common for a person's body to twist during a fall downstairs. Often, your knee may be susceptible to this twisting motion simply because the knee is composed of bone and ligaments. As a result of over-twisting, your knee may sustain an injury to your ACL or your MCL. These types of injuries can take a long time to heal and commonly require surgery and post-surgical physical therapy. In the most severe cases, a fall down a set of stairs can require a total knee replacement surgery. Fourth, dislocations and muscle strains. During a fall down stairs, your shoulder may take the brunt of the fall. When this occurs, you may sustain a shoulder dislocation, tear, and muscle strain. Sometimes a shoulder injury can resolve over a period of time with the appropriate conservative treatment such as chiropractic manipulation or physical therapy. Too often, however, shoulder injuries can require surgery and post-surgical therapy. Depending on your age at the time of your fall down the stairs, your shoulder may never get back to the strength and range of motion you had prior to the fall. Fifth, let's talk about spine and nerve damage. A fall down stairs may cause serious spine and nerve damage. This is typically due to the fact that your spine and nerves are more fragile than other parts of your body. Nerve damage can result from your body overstretching or because of direct trauma to your spine during a fall. While some nerve damage can resolve, far too often nerve damage can be permanent. Also, due to twisting or direct trauma to your spine during a fall, you may sustain spinal injuries, such as disc bulging and herniation, which can require significant treatment, including surgery. Sixth, traumatic brain injury or TBI. If you slip and fall down a flight of stairs, you can hit your head and suffer a traumatic brain injury. You don't necessarily have to smack your head on the ground or on the stairs to suffer a TBI. If the brain receives a severe enough jolt, it can cause serious harm regardless of whether your head hit the stairs below. For example, if you slip down the stairs and smack your head on drywall or on the railing, or even if you fall into another person and jolt your brain, it can cause a traumatic brain injury. One of the worst aspects of a traumatic brain injury is that people often don't get treatment. Thus, the safe bet is to get checked out as soon as possible after your accident to avoid worsening your injuries or experiencing any further injuries. Seventh, let's talk about cuts and bruises. 
When people fall down a flight of stairs, they often land on the sharp edges of the stairs or they hit the railing on the way down. Sometimes they smack the railing and smash into the sharp stairs below. The impact and velocity of a fall down a set of stairs and the sharp edges of the stairs themselves come together to create the perfect recipe for severe cuts and bruises. As a side note, these injuries often look much worse directly after the accident than they do weeks down the road, even though soft tissue damage or other injuries may persist or worsen below the surface. Therefore, it's a good idea to go ahead and take pictures of your injuries in the days after you slip and fall down a set of stairs, just to document how brutal the experience was. Eighth, soft tissue injuries. When we talk about a soft injury, we're basically just talking about an injury to the part of the body that isn't a bone. Some examples of soft tissues are muscles, tendons, ligaments, nerves, and skin. As we all know, when you have a hard fall down a flight of stairs, the impact is often much higher and more brutal than if you simply fell on the ground. The altitude and velocity amplify the fall. As a result, a fall down a set of stairs can cause serious tears and strains and these tears and strains can cause extreme and sometimes long-lasting pain. All right, and ninth, let's talk about head injuries. If you slip and fall down a flight of stairs, there's a high likelihood that you will bump your head on a stair or other hard object nearby, like a rail. Additionally, stairs are almost always hard and unforgiving. As a result, Head and brain injuries are very common when someone slips and falls down a flight of stairs.